hopefully set, you'll have already seen this the project videos. that we're talking about. And maybe you have some questions. Like, why are they like that? <laughs> why are they? Like, like what's the fucking point? Mm. Okay. Let me tell you. <laughs> There's a, a lot point. of things. There's a I lot got, of points. I got a whole book to throw at you. of great things that are happening tomorrow we have a birthday the most important uh. one being da -da 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 the anniversary of the, the entering life. of light into the world <laughs> yeah the yeah. agony of my mom at like 2 30 in the morning <laughs> he said let Fortuna. there be light yeah. And, there, and there it was. And, there and was it light. was good. And it was good. <laughs> so anyway, the other thing, which is still important, but slightly less important, so anyway. <laughs> um, is our visual album that we've been working on for like a year. We wanted to talk to you about what we're posting tomorrow, which is do we actually have... like three days ago. Yeah. When you see this video. So but three today... days from now when you see this, maybe. We got a visual album for Diverted Eyes, which we put out like six months ago, seven months ago, ten months ago. I don't know how long ago. August? August. Last August. Yeah, August. So, the album itself is not a concept album. It was not really intended to be that way. Um, but once we started putting music videos to it, it ended up having a really nice narrative structure to it. Um... So we just went all the way and made music videos for everything and made this really epic 45 minute long movie um, that also just happens to feature Fat Stallion music. You guys are so lucky. So lucky. <laughs> it's, uh, it's in four parts, partially because we can't post videos on YouTube that are longer than 15 minutes. So we had to chunk it up a little bit. Um, but also because, I mean, stories are structured into acts. We've got a three act story. Um, a three-act, like, hero's journey. I mean, it, it kind of loosely follows the hero's journey. Um, and then a prologue at the very beginning, which the prologue serves as expository and summative. Just learned that word. Expand it's, your vocabulary always. Yeah, yeah the yeah. more you know. <laughs> yeah. Ding! Um, expository and summative of the whole story, of the whole project. Um, <clears throat> so it introduces the... Uh, what essentially are the protagonists, which are us. There's the four of us in music video land, which are the protagonists. The real version of us makes it kind of autobiographical. The main idea of the whole story, as well as the prologue, is that there's the four of us living our own individual lives, deciding that it's all kind of bullshit, and so we leave and meet each other and decide that we're all on the same page about life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness and start a band. It's about the four of us too, is that when we got to know each other better, we learned that we were incredibly different people and we were facing very different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, very different, but at the same time, like very similar. Exactly. Well, and just celebrate our differences too. Like, absolutely. <laughs> You know, yeah. it's important Bond to be different. Bond over your similarities and celebrate your differences. Yep. Yes, absolutely. Boom. Mic drop. Except I'll, don't do that because they're expensive. Pistachio Ooh. shell drop because they're cheap. Scared Solid. Because they're garbage. <laughs> <laughs> this whole music video, honestly, is like parallelism yeah. on top of parallels, on top of parallels, on top of parallels. When you really dig into it, we're potentially telling like five different stories all at the same time. Um, and we're not going to dig into all of the different ways you can interpret it because that's your job. That's your job. You got to go watch it and see what you think Art. about it. But this is the, the main idea, at least. It kind of gets things started. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, the idea, even though we're all different, we all come from very different backgrounds, we're all going through very different uh, struggles. Um, we're not alone in the fact that we're going through struggles. And the last thing, while we're still talking about the prologue that I want to add, it's this idea of in, in the, the idea, the... It's this idea. This idea <laughs> that um, 
within narrative, there's essentially four big umbrellas of conflict and where conflict comes from. There is um, a, a top-down source of narrative where there is a higher authority above you, squashing you down, telling you that you're not shit. Riley gets to tell that story. He's the student that is failing all of his tests. Um, <laughs> among, <laughs> you're a failure! Among other things, but that's that's like part of how we visually told that story. Storytelling. Riley's really smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. This is this is all like hypothetical. It's a part of the, yeah. you know, storytelling material. Not that he's anyway. actually stupid. Um, Just the pressures. But, uh, yeah, yes. exactly. Pressures of. It's still a story. Even though it's autobiographical, it's still a story. So then there's there's the flip side of that, the, the like, bottom-up source of conflict, where the protagonist is in a position of power, but all of the people beneath him aren't supportive, aren't, uh, aren't paying attention, don't like what he's doing, whatever it might be. Um, and that's, that's where my story comes in, because I am the teacher and all of my students are throwing things at me. <laughs> So, teacher, leave them kids alone. <laughs> or students, leave that teacher alone. Right. Um, just doing his best. Right? I'm trying so mm -hmm. hard. I just want to be a good teacher. Behind it all, but, he's going to make you do a test. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but anyway, so we get top down, bottom up. We've got the, uh, the outward or the, uh, an exterior source of conflict. Um, which is Emma's story. That's people that are essentially at the same uh, level of power as you, um, your peers, your colleagues. Uh, she's working retail, so there's a whole bunch of other people, customers that are coming in that aren't any better or any worse than her, um, but still feel like they need to be dicks and treat her like shit. Um, and so then finally, there's the flip side of that where you have an inward or an internal source of conflict which uh, light it embodies more or less he's he's doing some woodworking and uh, he feels like he can't do the things that he feels like he should do um, and that's where a lot of his struggles in the context of the story come from as multifaceted human beings, I think any of us could really have taken on a story in any one of those four oh, ways. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was interesting going through this um, <laughs> as a group together and really thinking through this and, like, like, okay, this is the story that we told here, but, like, you know, I've gone through things in my life that are more of the internal struggle, and that's something I definitely could have really played on. On I've dealt with the top down, and I've dealt with the bottom up. You know, that's just life. You have those moments in every aspect, but just in this case, that's just mm -hmm. kind of how things... That's all the story. Yeah, just like any story, it's got to be kind of a caricature yeah. of life because you can only get so deep. Even if you spend, you know, two and a half hours, three hours telling, like, you know, a, like, Hollywood blockbuster-level movie, like, there's only so deep you can get with a lot of things, so it's... it, it by necessity needs to be kind of a caricature of life in in one sense or another. So we just kind of embodied different struggles um, for the sake of the story. So <clears throat> the prologue uh, establishes everything. It establishes the what we've said the protagonists are for the story, which is the us, basically. I'm just going to call it real life us, even though it's not real life us. Um, just to separate from all of the other versions of us that happen over the course of the story. Um, <clears throat> it leads us into Act 1, which essentially, conceptually, it is us meeting, forming a band, and then starting to play music together, which is the first music video in Act 1, which is all I've got, um, is from just like the really big overview standpoint, it's just us playing music together and really digging it. Um, we also introduce this uh, character that doesn't really get developed until the very end, um, but Danielle is a really good friend of ours, and she she's really cool. She's a super talented dancer, super talented BJJ practitioner, um, and uh, she choreographed a lot of stuff for mm -hmm. it. Um, in the context of this video, she acts as this uh, figure of desire, so to speak, 
um, which doesn't necessarily mean romantic. It can be romantic, but even more than that, it's a desire of maybe seeing somebody and wishing that you were more like them. So once we, real life us, have met and started playing music together, we're like, yeah, we're gonna be like a serious band and we're gonna make a music video because that's what bands do, right? It's so meta, gonna blow your mind. <laughs> Honey and Wine. We like meta. There we go. Honey and Wine is the first music video that real life us in the context of the visual album has made. Think about that. Follow that? Yeah. Good. Right? <laughs> so it's this super adorable little like almost puppet show of us making this story <clears throat> um, for the song Honey and Wine. And uh, it was directed by Light as uh. the first first video on the whole project, uh, as you watch it chronologically, that was directed by somebody other than me. Yeah. And that was him. It's because it Jack great. kicks butt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just he does a lot of work. Also, a lot for not us. to discount what Jack did for this project, which was the majority Almost of it. Almost so. all of it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> yeah. Honey and Wine leads into Ask which is this kind of uh, pivot almost. It kind of belongs in act one and kind of belongs in act two. Good storytelling it's moves. Big, exactly. Yeah. It's this transitional bit that kind of introduces the idea that exists in act two where there's all of these alternate worlds, all of these alternate little bubbles of story that alternate versions of ourselves exist in. Um, and Ask is the very first one of those where uh, there's this alternate version of Emma uh, designated by her different costume, because that was the easiest way for us to show that it's like a different version of her. Mm -hmm. um, so instead of the costumes that you've seen uh, in the previous videos with the really colorful top and w uh, whatever else you were wearing. <laughs> um, clothes. Clothes of some sort. You know, clothes some, that I wear. Something that goes on your legs. I don't Maybe remember. a shoe. Maybe a shoe. <laughs> um, other than that, there's, there's a, a dress of, of sorts. It was like a black and green kind of thing. Yeah. Is that right? Good job. Yeah. And then she had like a, a leather jacket on. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that character that's, that's kind of almost trapped in this like story bubble world. Mm -hmm. um, where... Uh, She's alone, she's trapped. A parallelism that I saw, like, after we finished everything between Honey and Wine and Ask is that they're both thematically linked by uh, a lack of communication between people. That's, like, the main idea of those two videos, which I thought was really cool. It's just a little side thing that I noticed. Bless you. Um, Thanks. But yeah, that in and of itself, the, the alternate story bubbles that people are trapped in is gonna be a big theme of act two. <clears throat> and so that gets established at the very end of act one in Ask. Um, another theme that gets established, kind of visual theme almost that happens a lot within all of these little story bubbles is there's this uh, like lack of continuity in some like ways. Temporal parasox. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there's the, the there's the, this uh, this rift in the the space time continuum. <laughs> calliope. Calli that, that, I was, <laughs> I was like, there's another word that I'm forgetting. Ha calliope. Ha hashtag Brave Warriors. <laughs> yeah. Not sponsored. Yeah. Hashtag Brave Warriors. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, like it. <laughs> Ask is kind of the first time we get really dreamlike is kind of mm -hmm. how I think of it. Yeah, you that's know, a good like way to put that's it. A, that's a way that I kind of look at the music video as a viewer, um, not just as a performer, I suppose, is that like the whole thing is kind of in my head while I'm at the bar. I'm thinking about a way to express my thoughts and feelings um, in the way that I know how, which is to perform, you know, and to me, it's almost like that performance that you see of Ask mm -hmm of us in that bar is all just kind of like a daydream, which is um, really enhanced by like the lack of continuity in visual things. Like sometimes it's just me singing, sometimes it's just the band. There's a lot of slow motion. There's a lot of like frozen characters. There's a lot of not direct explanations for things, but kind of kind of dreamy clues as to what's going on yeah, in the story. Definitely. Um, That's a really good way to put it. Yeah, yeah so it's... It makes for a really interesting experience, I think. Mm -hmm. And that one was directed by Chris Gilmore. That was another one that I didn't do. Thanks, Chris. Straw yeah. Thanks, man. Straw, Straw, Straw Hat, McGee. Hat McGee. So he's got a YouTube channel. Go ahead and check it out. Yeah. He's got some cool stuff on there. Yeah, for sure. So he was fun to work with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he did a, he's good, a good, guy. good guy. Good um, guy. So then that pushes us into Act Two, which 